Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today we will discuss structure of the esophagus, then the carcinoma of the esophagus, and at the end we will discuss the Plummer Vinson syndrome. First, we take up the structure of the esophagus. Structure is narrowing or tightening of the esophageal lumen, causing swallowing difficulties. In this figure, you can see that in the this is the esophagus. And in the esophagus, there, in this area, in you can say in the middle one third of the esophagus, there is narrowing of the esophagus. This narrowing is named as stricture. In this figure, you can see this is the esophagus and this is the airway. You can see the food bolus here, it is not able to pass this narrowing of the esophagus. This is the stricture in the esophagus. The bolus is unable to move down towards the stomach due to this stricture. In the inset here, on barium swallow axis, you can see this is the narrowing part of the esophagus known as stricture, which is shown in this Access. Classification or etiology of the es esophageal structure. It may be congenital or acquired. Uh, similarly, we can classify them as benign structure or malignant structure. Classification or etiology of the, es of the esophageal structure. Congenital structure it may involve lower one third of the esophagus. And the second variety is the acquired structure, which is due to some sort of etiology, which has caused the narrowing of the lumen of the esophagus. For example, corrosive intake, then trauma to the esophagus. It may be due to impacted foreign body and it may be instrumental trauma, for example, endoscopy. Sometimes external injury, for example, road traffic accidents, gunshot injuries, etc. may also lead to stricture formation. Reflux esophagitis, then surgical anastomosis may also lead to stricture formation. Clinical features of benign structure. The clinical features are dysphagia, which will be solids first and later on liquids may have difficulty to pass through the esophageal structure. Then regurgitation, cough due to spillover. The, the patient may have emaciation and failure. Investigations include, apart from routine investigations, the diagnostic investigations are excess barium swallow, AP view and right oblique view, which may show you the site and length of the structure of the esophagus. Similarly, esophagoscopy is performed to confirm the diagnosis and to rule out malignancy as well. Treatment. Treatment of structure of the esophagus is number one, esophagoscopy and dilatation of the structure with gum elastic bougies or balloon dilatation repeatedly. The second option of treatment is surgical resection of the narrow segment of the esophagus followed by end-to-end -end anastomosis or reconstruction of the food passage using colon, stomach or jejunum. 
the third option is feeding gastrostomy or jejunostomy if failed dilatation now in this figure you can see that this is the site of the stricture of the esophagus and this has been dilated with the help of this balloon dilatation the catheter is passed and this is the area of the balloon of the catheter and when this balloon is inflated it will lead to dilatation of the stricture area in this way repeated attempts of balloon dilatation may relieve the symptoms of dysphagia in this case now there are certain differences between benign stricture of the esophagus and the malignant stricture of the esophagus in benign stricture the stricture is usually will involve the long segment of the esophagus whereas in linear stricture the segment of the esophagus which is involved is usually a short one as compared to the benign stricture the benign stricture is concentric and smooth tapering whereas in malignant stricture the stricture is eccentric and irregular narrowing will be seen on x-ray bearing swallow we may see in benign stricture we may not see shouldering so there will be no shouldering on x-ray bearing swallow but shouldering is seen in case of malignant stricture similarly in benign stricture there is no mucosal irregularity but in malignant stricture usually it is associated with mucosal irregularity the second topic of discussion today is the carcinoma of the esophagus that is the malignant stricture the incidence of carcinoma of the esophagus is high in china japan russia south africa in subcontinent its incidence is ranging from 3.5 to 99.5% etiology of carcinoma of the esophagus is the exact etiology is not known yet but there are certain risk factors regarding this these are age factor it is seen in old age people around about 5 to 7 decade of life is the age of carcinoma of the esophagus similarly the sex carcinoma of the esophagus is more commonly seen in males so male preponderance is observed in ca esophagus similarly genetic predisposition because this is seen there is history of family history of carcinoma of the esophagus similarly other risk factors are smoking alcohol intake dietary deficiency for example vitamin a vitamin c riboflavin animal proteins deficiency of fat foods and vegetables clumbering syndrome is another risk factor for carcinoma of the esophagus similarly stricture of the esophagus especially due to prosebin intake similarly virus the human papilloma virus and the last one is the low socio economic group because this carcinoma of the esophagus is more commonly seen in these patients pathology in 90 to 93% of the patients it is the squamous cell carcinoma which is seen in involving the esophagus the other types of carcinomas which range from 7 to 10% are adenocarcinoma adenoid cystic carcinoma adeno squamous carcinoma gross appearance the carcinoma of the esophagus may be exophytic growth 
it may be ulcerative growth and sometimes it may be infiltrative growth annular type in majority of the patients we see exophytic growth or ulcerative growth spread first local spread locally it will fill the lumen of the esophagus then it may spread to trachea it may spread to the left bronchus aorta pericardium and it may spread to involve the retrolaryngeal nerve when it involves the retrolaryngeal nerve the patient may have hoarseness and he may have history of aspiration as well lymphatic spread the carcinoma of the esophagus may spread through the lymphatics to the cervical lymph nodes it may spread to the mediastinal lymph nodes ciliac lymph nodes and supraclavicular lymph nodes the third mode of spread is blood borne spread it may involve the veins and capillaries and may so it may spread to the lungs liver bones and brain clinical features symptoms the earlier symptoms are substernal discomfort preference to soft or liquid diet over solid diet the patient may have progressive dysphagia dysphagia first to solids and then to the liquids the patient will develop in aspiration he may have pain if tumor extension beyond the valve of the esophagus pain often referred to back the patient may have aspiration symptoms due to retrolaryngeal nerve involvement or due to fistula formation between esophagus and trachea the aspiration symptoms in the form of cough hoarseness aspiration pneumonia etc signs on physical examination of the patient the patient first of all general physical examination will show pallor calonychia and emaciation examination of the ent especially laryngeal capitis ideal for pooling of saliva and vocal cord paralysis then examination of the neck is also important because to note the cervical lymph node metastasis similarly systemic examination the most important one is the respiratory system for air entry wheezing and capitations similarly the systemic examination of the cardiovascular system and central nervous system especially for cranial nerve is also mandatory in uh, in this case the investigations which are needed are blood complete examination urine complete examination blood urea and sugar serum electrolytes total serum protein serum albumin globulin ratio x ray chest pa view x ray barium swallow ap and right oblique view this x ray barium swallow may show irregular narrowing filling defect shoulding sign and apical core sign similarly we may ask for exfoliative cytology endoscopy and biopsy is very important because it will not only confirm the diagnosis but it will also help to diagnose the type of the cancer ct scan of the neck and chest and mri of the neck and chest also show us about the site of the tumor size of the tumor and extent of the tumor treatment treatment includes build up the patient because majority of the patients they are in their old age and they are emaciated as well due to lack of nutrition so build up the patient is very important it may be done by blood transfusion iv fluids and parenteral nutrition as well second is the definite treatment it may be surgery alone it may be radiotherapy alone and it may be surgery followed by post operative radiotherapy or it may be surgery plus chemotherapy 
and sometimes the patient may need only radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Then in very much advanced DNs, the patient will have only palliative treatment for the patient. Palliation may be in the form of feeding gastrostomy, feeding jejunostomy. Similarly, esophageal intubation by celestine tube and sometimes laser surgery with MD YAG laser. Conventional strategy for surgical treatment of esophageal cancer. If the cancer involves the lower one third of the esophagus and it is squamous cell carcinoma, in that case, N block resection of the lower one third of the esophagus plus greater part of the stomach plus part of the pancreas and spleen as well. If the cancer involves the middle one third of the esophagus, in that case, resection of the segment of the esophagus, having the growth with safe margin, then mobilization of the stomach via a midline epigastric incision, and then esophagogastric anastomosis. If the cancer involves upper one third of the esophagus, in that case, no surgical treatment will be helpful to treat the condition. Only radiotherapy or chemotherapy or combination of both these may help the patient in that case. Radiotherapy. Response is good if the tumor size is less than 5 cm. The dose is 5000 to 5500 centigrade over 4 to 6 weeks, weeks period. This is the X ray barium swallow right lateral view which is showing the filling defect with irregular margin of the esophagus. This is again X-ray barium swallow shouldering sign and irregular filling defect is evident on this X-ray barium swallow. Again this is X-ray barium swallow showing filling defect of the esophagus with typical proximal and distal shoulder. This is the apple core sign in carcinoma of the esophagus. This is proximal part of the esophagus, distal part of the esophagus. With this, you can see this is the some some sort of uh, barium is showing some core of the esophagus, just similar to the apple core sign in carcinoma of the esophagus. This is this is the core of the apple, whereas this is the proximal part and this is the distal part of the apple. Similar is the case of this is called the apple core sign in carcinoma of the esophagus. The third topic for discussion today is the plumber vincent syndrome. Now you can see this is a narrowing at the upper end of the esophagus due to a web formation. Narrowing due to web formation. Usually the patient of plumber vincent syndrome, they are females above the age of 40 years and cervical dysphagia is seen in these patients due to web formation. Epidemiology. plumber vincent syndrome is an extremely rare condition, though its exact prevalence is unknown. It is becoming less common in developed countries, but the condition is increasingly found in developing countries, particularly in Asia. Etiology. The exact cause is unknown. However, Certain factors involved may be genetic predisposition, there may be autoimmune factors involved. Iron deficiency is usually seen in these patients. Other nutritional deficiencies may play a role as well. It is more common in women, particularly in middle age, 
with a peak age over 50 years near the menopause. The depletion of iron dependent oxidative enzymes may produce myasthenic changes in muscles involved in swallow mechanism, atrophy of the esophageal mucosa, and formation of webs as epithelial complication. Esophageal webs in Plummer Vinson syndrome are found at upper end of the esophagus, post precoid region, and Shersky's rings may be found at the lower end of the esophagus. Clinical features. The clinical features of Plummer Vinson syndrome include number one, a burning sensation with the tongue and oral mucosa. Secondly, a smooth, shiny, red dorsum of the tongue due to atrophy of the lingual papillae is seen. The patient will have dysphagia, that is typically the cervical dysphagia between the hide bone and suprasternal node due to web formation. Odinophagia may be seen and the patient is usually having paler due to iron deficiency anemia. The patient may have pain, he may be feeling weakness and paler due to iron deficiency anemia. The patient may have angular stomatitis and pyromechia as well. Now you can see the chelitis, the angular stomatitis, angular stomatitis at the angles of the mouth. Smooth red dorsum of the tongue typically seen in Plummer Vinson syndrome due to atrophy of the lingual papillae. And typically, chylonychia, spoon shaped nails are seen in these patients having Plummer Vinson syndrome. Incidence of carcinoma. In post cricoid region, it is about 8 to 10 percent of the patients. In other regions, the incidence of carcinoma is only 2 to 3 percent. The other regions include tongue, cheek, pharynx, esophagus, and stomach. Investigations. Number one, blood hemoglobin level. It will be decreased below normal. Then peripheral blood film will show microcytic hypochromic red blood cells, total serum iron decreased below normal. Normal in males is 14 to 32 micromoles per liter, whereas total serum iron in females is 10 to 28 micromoles per liter. Iron binding capacity will be increased in these patients having Plummer Vinson syndrome. Normal iron binding capacity is 45 to 70 micromoles per liter. X-ray barium swallow will show web in 15% of the patients. Esophagoscopy and biopsy for histopathology to rule out malignancy and to confirm the diagnosis is mandatory in these patients. Now you can see here, this is the X-ray barium swallow showing a web formation here in the cervical part of the, at the upper end of the esophagus, sorry. And this is the endoscopic view of the esophageal web. This is the web formed at the upper end of the esophagus. Treatment. Treatment is iron therapy, oral or parent. Correction of B12 and B6 deficiency and esophagoscopy and dilatation of the web area by Bruges. Thank you so much.